Okay, just in time. And we are live. All right, Katie, are you checking in on this? Is this I working? Am. Okay. Hello and welcome to Kaleidoscope Enrichment's very first live stream. Um, I figured since we're all at home right now and I miss you guys a whole lot, that it would be fun to do some projects once a week together uh, using some things that you may have around the house. Some of these will be classics that you've probably done with me before if you've ever attended one of my programs. Others may be something new. Lots of them are actually from my book, The Big Book of Maker Camp Projects. So we have a little bit of something different for each of you each week. Now remember, if you have questions at any time, post them right in the comments. My daughter Katie is here and she is ready to uh, help me answer those questions for you. Um, but why don't we go ahead and get started, okay? Today is Marshmallow Madness. So these are all projects that you can do using the humble but delicious marshmallow, right? Okay, so let us start with kind of the simplest, an engineering challenge using marshmallows. So today we are going to use, I like to use some mini marshmallows. These actually sat out to dry, so they're hardened just a little bit. This makes them better for building material. When they're really soft, they're hard to build with. Um, and then I've just got your classic spaghetti. Um, regular old, everyday spaghetti. This is really easy building materials you probably have around the house or that you can get from the grocery store. If you um, can't get your hands on spaghetti, Toothpicks work too, okay? Your challenge is very simple. I want you to build the tallest tower that you can out of just spaghetti and marshmallows. Couple of things to think about when you're doing this. First off, your base needs to be wide. If you have a really tiny skinny base, it's not going to hold the weight way up on top. If you wanna give yourself a real challenge, Challenge yourself to put a big marshmallow on the top of your tower and see that your tower can hold that, right? Um, you also want to think about the shapes that you use. It's common to build in squares because squares are really easy to construct, right? And we're just going to go ahead and put our marshmallows on the end of our spaghetti. Don't I, you know, if you can, I wouldn't use angel hair for this. You want the thickest spaghetti you can get your hands on. It makes it a little bit easier to build. And you know, if your spaghetti breaks, no big deal. Right? There's plenty more spaghetti in the package that you can use. Uh-oh. Can I get my spaghetti off the tray? Here we go. I'm making myself one of the easiest shapes to build and the one that you may go for first when you're doing this. And that is a square. Right? A square has four sides. Oh, I broke my spaghetti. More building materials. You can see I'm not being perfect about it. You could get out a ruler and really, really um, want to make sure that you get these just right. But, okay, there's my spaghetti square. Well, it's a little bit more of a rhombus. It's not quite straight. It's a parallelogram. No, it's not even a parallelogram. Anyway, there's my, my square. And you can see the problem with the square already. Those joints, those 90 degree angle joints, they like to twist and turn um, with sheer forces. So even if you build a cube, you're going to have that same problem. And as you start building up and up, you're going to start to see your whole structure twist. So there's a, a shape that is a little bit stronger. Who knows what that shape might be? If you've done engineering challenges with me before, you probably know what it is. Who knows? Okay. I bet there are some of you out there saying it's the triangle and you would be very, very correct on that. So if I just take off one side and give myself a triangle, an almost equilateral, but not quite triangle, you can see that when I try to twist it, it's not twisting, okay? It's staying strong because the force on all three of those points is evenly distributed. So triangles are really good shapes to use for building activities. I love them for bridges. The next time you're out driving with your family, you may take a look at different bridges. Sometimes you'll see triangles put together into more complex shapes, or you may see squares with two extra braces through the center. So that square becomes essentially two or four triangles, and that makes it stronger. So when you're thinking about your base, consider a triangle or a pyramid as your base to give you extra strength on the bottom. So I want you guys to give that a shot, build, and um, 
with your parents' permission, post your pictures, okay, in the comments or post your pictures online and just tag me at Kaleidoscope Enrichment because I would love to see what you create. This is a really fun one to get everybody in the family involved and see what you can all come up with, who can build the tallest tower. Another fun challenge, if you do have toothpicks, is use that same idea of the triangles and see who can build the longest bridge to go between two tables. Um, or you can see who can build the strongest bridge and put like books on top of it and make it a little bit of a contest. If you want, you can do a little bit of research about towers and bridges to find out what different shapes are used in engineering and architecture to make for really strong uh, creations. So that is challenge one, it's an engineering challenge and I wanna see how you guys do on that one, right? Okay, now our second challenge is an art challenge for you. Okay, we've got a little bit of artistic endeavor. This is my marshmallow minions and <laughs> this one, um, this one was created by my daughter, Katie. She said it's a parasite and he does look pretty frightening. He looks pretty terrifying if you ask me. Um, this is very simple. We are going to just create our own marshmallow shapes using some toothpicks or if you don't have toothpicks and you have leftover spaghetti, spaghetti works just fine. Um, and some different marshmallows. I like to use a good combination of big ones and little ones and you can stick them together. For our paint, you can use food dye directly if you want to, but it is much easier to make your own um, food paint, okay? Make your own food paint because it doesn't bleed quite as much and you're not gonna use as much food dye. If you use food dye directly on your marshmallows, it kind of bleeds, it's really dark, and you're gonna have to use a lot of it to paint. So we can create our own edible paint, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a moment, to make our marshmallow minions. The rest of it's pretty simple. You're gonna use your toothpicks or your spaghetti. You're gonna use your different marshmallows and you're gonna create a cute little minion, kind of like this guy. He's a little bear, he's super cute. Um, when we paint, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using paint brushes that are really clean, like they haven't been used for acrylics or oils or anything like that. If they've been used for non-toxic watercolor, just give them a good wash with dishwashing uh, detergent and warm water. Best bet, if you have brushes that haven't been used at all, just rinse those with water and use them. If you don't have anything that fits the bill, you can go for the classic cotton swab. That will work as your paintbrush for this, okay? So you have a lot of different options there. Let's talk about how to make your paint. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to the other view so I can show you a little bit more easily how we do this. Okay. I have here a nice little bowl, some popsicle sticks. I have your classic food coloring that you can get in the store. And I have um, corn uh, syrup. This stuff I don't tend to use much for actual cooking, but it's really good for a variety of craft projects, to be completely honest. And if you want to make your own marshmallows, the recipe's in my book. You can check it out. Um, this is the stuff that you're going to need to do that. So it's very simple to do. You're just going to go ahead and put... Oh, this is gooey, gooey corn syrup, gooey corn syrup in there, right? Then you're going to add a little bit of food dye and a little goes a long way. You can always add more, but you can't take it out, right? So we're going to add our food dye and we're just going to give that a stir. Now, you may decide that this needs to be thinned out a little bit and you can go ahead and add a little bit of water to it to make a more thinned paint if you're trying to do like your whole marshmallow. I tend to like it nice and thick because I find that it doesn't bleed as much. Okay, and what I mean by that is it doesn't kind of get all over the marshmallow, but it's really a personal preference. I'm just grabbing one of my paint brushes, moving that off to the side and closing my food dye so I don't end up with it everywhere. Here we go, I've got my little paintbrush. I've got my little bear who's gonna be green because that's just the color I happen to make. And there you go. I'm just going to paint right onto the ears. And you can see this is pretty thick. So like I said, you kind of have to play with it to make it a color that you, you feel comfortable with. And you might need to add a little bit of water if you want. Um, again, try it first and add water and add a little bit at a time, a couple drops at a time. You don't want to thin this out too, too much. If you only have something like honey on hand, that will also work for this. You can use a little bit of honey. Um, and they do sell, if you happen to have them around or see them while you're out, they sell um, 
edible ink pens that you can actually draw right on your marshmallows with. So you can create yourself a little bit of edible art because you can totally eat every bit of this. These paints are 100% edible. Um, and there we go. So I'm just kind of leaving them there. But that is a really easy way to make some really cool sculptures. And again, get the whole family together, pick a theme, maybe pick, you know, Pokemon or something like that and decide to all work together to create your little crazy creatures here. All right, we're going to switch on back. All right, there we are. Let me clean up a little bit because I'm pretty good at making a mess and I'm not as good at cleaning up after the mess. So I'm trying to be better. All right. So that's our easy edible paint that you can use on all kinds of things. If you ice cookies with like a royal icing or a glaze, you can probably use that same paint on them and make some beautiful cookie creations too. So try it out and see what you create. Again, if you make some cool marshmallow minions, I want to see pictures. I'll post some of my favorite marshmallow minions that my, my, my uh, campers have made each year uh, so you can get some inspiration. My favorite was when someone made an actual minion from the movie out of marshmallows as a marshmallow minion, which is hilarious. I mean, you just can't even deny it. That's funny. Okay, last idea for the day. And this one's a science experiment. It's a little bit of chemistry. If you've ever taken an edible chemistry or an edible um, science class with me or kitchen chemistry class with me or any of those, candy chemistry I offer um, in October usually at Blairstown Elementary School with the rec department, then you have heard me talk about the Maillard reaction. And what that is, is a really special chemical reaction. And it is the reason that we have caramel and roasted marshmallows and even like, you know, that lovely kind of crust you get on meat. And what's happening in the Maillard reaction is that the protein and the sugar in your food is heating up, okay? And it's creating that caramelization, it's creating new sugars and new flavors. There are so many new compounds made during this reaction, scientists still have not identified all of them. And we like figured out the basic science of the Maillard reaction back in like the 1800s. So they've been working on this for a long time. But what we do know is that it's delicious. We also know that it's affected by pH. pH is basically how acidic or not acidic something is. Well, it turns out that higher pH, things that are more alkaline, like baking soda or milk, tend to turn brown first with the Maillard reaction. And we can use this for our spy marshmallows. This one's a very simple one to put together. All you need is a little bit of baking soda. Okay, I'm just gonna do a spoonful of baking soda into my bowl. You're gonna do about the same amount of water into your bowl, and you're basically making a baking soda paint. Wow. I've Mess, I was not careful with my measurements at all. So you can see this is pretty forgiving. I'm going to mix that up. Okay. Then you need a marshmallow on a stick. Pretty simple, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure you can probably handle a marshmallow on a stick. If you've ever gone camping, you've probably done the roasting marshmallow thing. And that's basically what we're going to do today. So marshmallow on a stick, my baking soda paint, and... Again, my cotton swabs. You can use your really clean paint brushes if you prefer. I find a cotton swab works really, really easily for this. So join me over here. I'm going to show you the next step. And we're going back to our document camera. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, here is my baking soda paint. You can see pretty liquidy. Don't worry if it doesn't all dissolve. It's going to work out pretty well either way. And I've got my marshmallow on a stick and I've got my Q-tip. And all I'm going to do is dip my Q-tip into my baking soda solution and I'm going to paint right onto the marshmallow. Now, this can be kind of hard. You can maybe see if I could catch it in the light. You could see where it's, a where it's wet. You kind of have to, you're painting like almost invisibly. So this takes a little bit of practice and that's okay. All right. So you could kind of see if you catch it, you can see where it's wet, right? And there's, then you can see the paint. All right, so I've painted my design onto my marshmallow. And then the last step, super easy. As if you're making a s'more at camp, you're going to heat up your marshmallow. You could do this over your stove. If you have a camp um, fire or a fireplace outside or something like that, you could do it that way. Um, I'm going to use a heat gun. Uh, a high blow dryer will work. Anything that gets this heated up. So let's see how we do.
Okay. And if you can see him, there you go. So that is not a very good smiley face. But I have no doubt that some of you guys are much more talented at this than I am and can make some really cool things. Let's see if I can get a better shot there. Can you see him? Hello, Mr. Smiley Face Marshmallow. So this is a really fun thing to do and just make some really creative little creations. All right, switching back over here. Oh, not switching. There we go. All right, some technical difficulties. So that's three of my very favorite ways to use the humble but delicious marshmallow. So I want to see what you guys create. Take out some spaghetti and mini marshmallows and build some engineering creations or take out some marshmallows and build your marshmallow minion with your own edible paints or just go ahead and use the power of science and chemistry to make a super secret spy marshmallow and make faces that show up with the heat. Okay. Um, I am looking forward to seeing you all again really soon. Hopefully this summer we'll be able to be together for camp. In the meantime, stay safe and stay healthy. I will see you back here 3 p.m. next week. Also keep an eye out on the Warren County Library uh, Facebook page because at 2 p.m. on Mondays and Fridays, I do activities there too. So I've got lots of fun planned for you guys. Um, take care. I'll see you next week. And uh, I hope you have lots of fun making something new.